It was one of those Thursday afternoons when, if you can, you head for the great outdoors. Lucky for us, we could. We've got together an impromptu foursome. Cap Lambert, George Bell, Jim Duncan, the three of them are doctors, and me, Ed Wallace, editor of the Chronicle. I didn't know a story was going to come out of that afternoon, but, well, it started with an argument on the last hole. Okay, Cap, your shot. Say, I see where Gemma published our society's report on the care for the indigent. Yes, I saw that. I sure hope it goes through. It sure worked for us here. Sure Gemma? Is. Yeah, Journal of the American Medical Association. We read it after we've been through the Reader's Digest, just so we can keep up with our patients. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the other day a lady came into my office and we were talking about a couple of... I'm going to write a book about doctors I've known. Are we all going to be in it? Yeah, all three of you, especially <laughs> Cap Lambert, the doctor who clobbers a golf ball. <laughs> all right. If my esteemed colleagues would talk less about the AMA, maybe a man could concentrate on his golf. Okay, Cap. But we shouldn't have been talking shop. Sorry. Not even shop talk. Politics. I don't know what the doctors are coming to. Wow! Good shot! That's it. You get Cap Matt, and he's the best golfer on the course. <laughs> well, fellas, I'm telling you, we don't stop talking about the AMA. Cap's going to beat us every time we play. Yes, sir, old Cap really gets steamed up about the AMA. And that's true. It is? What? Oh, a newspaper editor runs into lots of odd and interesting information. There was a survey report on my desk the other day, uh, the results of an AMA questionnaire. Now, the gist of the thing was that the public uh, thinks more of doctors than doctors think of themselves. I wish they had sent me one of those questionnaires. I can understand that layman being awed by his doctor but not a doctor by his own organization. Don't you support your medical societies? Support them. I pay my dues all the way down the line. AMA, state, and county. Have to, or I couldn't set foot inside a hospital. That's what I don't like about it. They're compulsory, and worse than that, they're run by an ironclad little hierarchy that dishes out policies they've pulled out of thin air, and every doctor in the country kowtows to them. Is that right? Every doctor? No, yeah, wait, listen. wait a minute, Cap. And Cap knows he's not right on all that. He's just a natural born againer. He likes to argue, so he's just baiting us. But he is right on one thing. Almost every practicing MD is a member of AMA. 90% of them, anyway. Well, maybe so, but you can't tell me that these doctors can go along day after day after day. Get those ideas, Cap. George, all you have to do is look around and you can nah, tell nah, that these nah. things. Wait, Cap, wait now. What can I get for you, gentlemen? I'll have a beer. Beer. Uh, beer. Make it four. Now, if the AMA and our medical societies didn't exist for a worthwhile purpose, does it seem likely there'd be so many members? No, not likely, but uh, how can you explain Cap? Oh, well, we've told you. He's on the other side of everything. He's just a rugged individual. <laughs> what doctor isn't? Look, when a patient comes into me, I'm on my own. I have to make my own decisions. I have to rely on what I can do and what I know. I can't wish my responsibilities off on somebody else. Right, right. Well, sounds reasonable. Oh, oh boy, right here. Well, oh, oh, am I ever ready for let's that? Let's see. Hmm, that's your. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's refreshing. But you've got responsibilities to medicine as a profession and public health in general. And you can't wish them off on anyone else either. My responsibilities are my patients, not to a bunch of men who happen to be doctors, too. Well, that's what I'm driving at. As one individual MD, you can take care of your own patients. But you can do a lot more for your patients in terms of better medical care by working with doctors who have the same responsibilities of their patients you have. Cap, how long has it been since you've been to a meeting of the county society? Oh, I don't know, not long. Oh, no, not over four or five years. Now, you know better than that. Well, what difference does it make? They just bumble along and never get anyplace. Ed, 
Just to set the record straight, here's how our medical societies operate. Now, this is the county society right here. Now, this is Cap, in case he ever came to a meeting. Yeah, old Salty Lambert. On second thought, maybe I'd better use Pepper. Yeah, that's Cap. Okay, so Cap has an idea. Now, for sake of illustration, let's say that it's the same idea that Jim and I were talking about when we were out on the golf course. It's a plan for providing medical care for the indigent. Now, Cap presents his idea. The rest of us, we like it. We voted in. It's law with us because our society is complete and apart. We don't have to go anywhere for sanctions. That's right. When we find something that works well for us, we think we ought to spread the word. Now, we can do that by sending Cap as our delegate to the state society, authorized to present his big idea in the form of a resolution. Now, the other delegates can take it or leave it, but it makes sense, so they buy it. Now, it's state policy. Then, along comes a meeting of the AMA House of Delegates. You're not going to do that, send Cap as a delegate to the AMA? Well, it could happen. Oh, what a day for the AMA. Oh, well, you're sure pushing me around. No, Cap, you're pushing. This is your big idea. You're working for it. Now, the House of Delegates molds it over. Then they refer it to a reference committee for further study. Now, any one of us can go before the reference committee and tell them just exactly what we think of the idea. The reference committee reports back to the House for final action. And if enough of them say go, it goes. That's the way this organization works. The policies come up from the bottom, the services spread out from the top. Well, I'm no doctor, but if I were doing the diagnosing, I'd say it was just a plain case of democracy. Right. See, Cap? Talk about your ironclad hierarchies all you want to. The policies start right here at home. Okay, Conrad Steiner, I suppose you think I'm arguing just to be arguing. <laughs> I wouldn't put it past you. <laughs> With Cap, you never know. But I do think this. There are a lot of misunderstandings about this and a lot of other things in AMA. Sometimes these misunderstandings get in the way of a doctor being able to really appreciate his own organization. Misunderstandings. Look, you don't have to be so condescending to me. I know it's not as simple as you make out. It's a compulsory setup. You can't prove that. I don't have to. You do with me. With me, too. I don't believe it. No medical society has a rule that says you have to join. All right, I will prove it. I'll get the facts in black and white, and while I'm at it, I'm going to track down some other things that have been bothering me just so I can call you on them. Why don't you? Yeah, you bring up the for instances, and we'll see if we don't have the answer. You won't have. I'll bet on it. I'll take that bet to the tune of a steak dinner. Just pick your time to pay off. No, no, hold on. How about me? What do you mean, Ed? Well, I smell a story here. You've got me interested. But uh, how am I going to find out how all this thing ends if you fellas do all of your arguing up in your offices and out at the hospital? You know, in a way, I started it, and I want to be in on the finish. Well, Ed, we can bring you up to date while Cap is making up his mind to hit the ball. Okay, next week, same foursome, same topic. Now, this could go on and on for weeks thereafter, or I miss my guess. Oh, maybe not. Say, who pays for this? Not me, I won. The game, you mean. Well, just wait till next week. Yeah, yeah. Next yeah week. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's a great guy. Dr. Lambert, like a lot of us, started something on a bet that he might never have followed up otherwise. He had some doubts about the AMA, but he had to get his facts straight before he jumped his colleagues. So, Cap spent what time he could wedge in between patients. 15 minutes or so at a crack, getting the inside story of AMA. The information wasn't hard to find. JAMA, which he had previously scanned only for technical medical articles, was full of facts about his organization. There were other books and pamphlets in his file, things Cap had never taken the time or trouble to read. They gave him more of the story of AMA. It was quite a story. It was a story that had touched on his life nearly every day of his medical career. In the medical schools he had attended, in the drugs he prescribed, it touched his career in the foods he recommended for good nutrition. In the hospitals in which he practiced, and in the techniques and the equipment so essential to his skill. The AMA story affected Cap 
in the development of health insurance to help his patients pay their medical bills, and in the representation of Cap's own views before state and national lawmaking bodies. Even then, in the early stages of finding out the score, Cap would have had to concede that there are many, many benefits for members of the AMA. But with Cap, it wasn't a matter of conceding anything. He was out to nail some hides to the wall, and he thought he knew just the way to do it. Goodbye. Oh, hi, Cap. Hi. What's on your mind? Oh, nothing official. I have a bet on with a couple of doctors here. You can sell it for me. Oh, I can? How? Just put it down in writing that a doctor has to be a member of the AMA before he can practice in this hospital. Well, we don't require AMA membership for staff privileges here. Anyway, what sort of a bet does that settle? I say that AMA controls hospital privileges, and I want to prove it. Oh, well, now, wait a minute, Cap. You see, we make the rules regarding the regulation of this hospital, not the AMA. You mean you set this up on your own hook? Certainly. Now, first of all, membership in AMA is not required. The Board of Trustees of this hospital establishes the qualifications for staff membership. Of course, they seek the advice of the staff. Now, it says right here, our doctors must be eligible for membership in or members of the County Medical Society. Well, why make a rule like that? Well, Cap, we have obligations to the public in this hospital. It has to be run efficiently and with well-qualified staff men. Now, we figure that if a man is eligible for county society membership, it's an indication that he is qualified. It's evidence of the fact that he holds a license to practice in this state, that he's well-trained, and that he's an ethical physician. Now, that protects the patients that come here. Well, I'll be. I, I always thought... Well, never mind. I, I'm sorry about it. Well, that's I... all right, Cap. Come back any time. Mm, thank you. Oh, well, say, uh, don't you want that statement? No, never mind. I'll get them on something else. Something else. With all the sounding off he'd done, there had to be something else. Sure, that was it. How about the way the AMA clamps down on medical schools, limiting the supply of doctors? But he'd have to go back to the books for that. What Cap actually found in the books was the story of organized medicine's fight for high standards in the medical profession. A good doctor is the product of a good school. A school with a qualified staff. With adequate teaching facilities, including the most modern diagnostic equipment. A school that challenges the student to investigate the various fields of research. One that gives ample opportunity for clinical experience. so that students can work with real patients under supervision. Nowhere did Cap find evidence that AMA set quotas for students. AMA helped set standards only. On the basis of its facilities and faculty, each school determines its own student capacity. With AMA guarding standards, all established medical schools are now fully accredited graduating more doctors than ever before. What's more, the American Medical Education Foundation was set up to give financial help to medical schools. In addition, the medical profession has aided in the development of new medical schools, and others are expanding from two-year basic science to complete four-year courses. Cap recalled that, over the years, AMA has developed other standards, too. Way back in 1847, the association drew up a model statement of the ideal doctor and his conduct. These principles of medical ethics are not laws, but guideposts. A code of ethics is one of the things that distinguishes a profession from a job. Doctors have always shown more concern for proper conduct than most folks, and the more Cap thought about it, the less willing he was to have it any other way. For Cap knew that the quack, such as this one, with his ineffective machines and worthless tonics, endangers thousands of lives and does so in defiance of the true doctor's professional standards. Through its Bureau of Investigation, the AMA, from the very beginning, has waged war on fraudulent practices, on quacks, 
nostrums, phony devices, and cultists. And it was here, in the AMA House of Delegates, that the Bureau of Investigation began as a resolution. Since then, other new councils, committees, bureaus, and departments, each expressing the doctor's own needs and desires for expanded AMA services, have also been decreed by resolutions. Resolved that AMA establish a council on pharmacy and chemistry to evaluate new drugs and report on them to the profession. Resolved that AMA set up a council on national defense to study doctors' experiences in the armed forces and recommend to the United States better ways to utilize medical manpower. Resolved that AMA organize a council on rural health to provide guidance to rural people interested in improving health in their areas and attracting doctors to their communities. Resolved that AMA create a committee on toxicology to study the health problems associated with household and chemical products to acquaint the public with their dangers in order to reduce accidental poisonings among children. Resolved that AMA form a committee on aging to improve and advance the medical care of older people. These and many, many other mandates from the nation's physicians have built the organization known as AMA. As medicine goes forward, other problems will be brought to light. America's doctors analyze the problems, lay down the policy lines, and prescribe the activities. This work is then carried out on a day-to-day -day basis for the medical profession by a staff of several hundred people in AMA headquarters in Chicago. People free from the demands of a medical practice. People who can devote full time to the details of carrying out the doctor's programs. Many of the men who direct association activities at headquarters are doctors themselves. Men who understand medicine's problems as only a doctor can. These men are in close touch with the activities that are being carried on simultaneously by state and county societies in a united effort to provide better medical service all along the line. Cap Lambert used to have a ready quip he repeated on any number of occasions. All of us had heard him say it. The doctors should leave politics to the politicians. Of course, Cap didn't leave politics to the politicians in his private life. He let the lawmakers know his views on school levies, community improvements, and public health. Figured taking an interest in such matters was his responsibility as a citizen. Not until a certain fact caught his eye did he realize that doctors collectively have responsibilities as citizens. The fact was in the AMA Washington newsletter. Over 400 bills pertaining to health were introduced in Congress alone last session. Over 400 bills not counting all the bills affecting medicine that come up in state legislatures. That brought it home. That much legislation on which men in medicine are often most qualified to testify. AMA maintains its information office in Washington to keep congressmen as well as doctors posted on medicine's views. In the Washington office, hundreds of bills are analyzed and medical opinions are expressed before congressional committees. Out of organized medicine's participation in political affairs have come such worthwhile measures as the Hill-Burton Hospital Construction Act. Mental health surveys to promote progress in a once neglected field of health. An air and water pollution control programs Laws that demonstrate medicine's unselfish interest in the public welfare. Every state society does a similar job where state legislation is concerned, working toward uniform medical examiner acts. Waging extensive campaigns to protect the public from cults and faddists, and continuing its efforts to promote the passage of sound health legislation. Cap was coming to see that he couldn't practice medicine in a vacuum, that he was tied in with organized medicine's responsibilities of citizenship, that what happened in government affected his patients and himself. 
the health of all those people down there and millions more depended upon organized medicine and its willingness to lobby openly against bad bills and for good ones. But knowing these facts and admitting them were two different things with Cap. He wasn't ready to let knowledge stand in the way of his bullheadedness. <laughs> Not yet. Well, uh, thank you very much, Doctor. Yes, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Say, Cap, didn't I see you at the county society meeting the other night? Yeah, trying to get the goods on us firsthand, huh? How about it, Cap? Change your mind about medical organizations? Oh, I'm too busy with that foolishness. Busy? Oh, Cap, that's just a way out. Uh -uh. I am busy. Now, you surgeons can arrange for free time. But us GPs, oh, we now, have an oh, now, time. an OB can't have set hours either, but I'll bet I'd have found time. Well, I'll find time, I'll find time. But if you're so sure of yourself, what are you pushing me for? That's all they could get out of him that week, but Cap was still digging, still considering some facts and looking for more. Sometimes he almost forgot that he was trying to find things to quibble about and became engrossed with the significance of what he was learning and he was learning from books like this, learning of the scientific activities of AMA, its concern with what's new, what's effective, what's promising, and how the latest techniques can be practically applied. Such information comes into AMA headquarters from the four corners of the earth. AMA editors carefully sift through the material and evaluate it. And then these scientific findings roll off the presses by the thousands and thousands of copies to be forwarded to every MD in the land. AMA's law department stands ready with medical legal information on such subjects as medical licensure, malpractice, narcotics, and the corporate practice of medicine. Such legal services are offered to all members, and briefs from the Law Department's loan library are available to every member or his attorney. Available, too, is health education, in the form of pamphlets on everything from skin problems to sex education. Doctors can get these materials for their patients from the Bureau of Health Education. Teachers, as well as the general public, enthusiastically endorse today's health published by the AMA, and the only authentic publication of this type. The directory department keeps its giant files active on every doctor, recording his complete background and qualifications. From this information is compiled the AMA directory, the undisputed reference of the medical profession. The film department maintains a complete source file on medical motion pictures, many of which can be supplied by the film library. The association has a number of exhibits available on loan for shipping charges only. One of the newest, Life Begins, presents for the first time actual fetuses from four weeks to full term. Such exhibits help to elevate the medical profession in public esteem. The libraries of AMA serve as a collection agency for current medical information. Some 1,600 periodicals from all over the nation and the world pour in here each month. From this current information, the quarterly cumulative index medicus is edited. Members can borrow periodicals or secure without cost a package of latest information from the AMA libraries on any given subject. Of all of the services of AMA, there was only one that Cap had given any serious thought to before. The huge annual AMA conventions. Here, doctors receive intensified postgraduate courses in all that's new in medicine. They can choose from among hundreds of exhibits and papers by the country's top medical men. They can watch demonstrations on new techniques and equipment. They can share the latest triumphs of modern medicine. Cap had to admit there were plenty of services, services that were a natural outgrowth of the widespread activities of AMA, services to the profession and to the people of America, and Cap was part of it. The AMA, many doctors working as one to promote the science and art of medicine and the betterment of public health. What a 
lousy shot. Cap, how come we can't make you mad enough to play golf today? We've been trying hard enough. We've been plugging the AMA all afternoon. I'll talk when I get ready. I hope so. I want to get my story. Cap is today. Yeah, I wonder what's eating. Well, maybe he needs a doctor. <laughs> maybe he does it that. <laughs> what would you gentlemen like? Beer. I'll have a beer. Uh, me too. Crow for me. Crow? Yes, a large, tough, choking serving of crow. And I'll eat it right here. Are you sure you didn't get too much sun today? Bring him a beer too. Yes, sir. Is this our cap? Oh, lay off. You know what I am. I'm like the guy that buys a big, high-powered camera and then never takes a picture. He did get too much sun. Look, Cap, when you come over to our side, you take all the fun out of it. I can't help that. It's my side, too. I left here a couple of weeks ago, ready to take you guys up one side and down the other. I was positive that AMA membership was compulsory, that I couldn't set foot in the hospital unless I showed a dues-paid card. Well? Well, baloney. George and Jim knew that was not an AMA regulation. It was a hospital regulation. Oh, here's the beer. How about one there? Oh, this looks good. Well, that's interesting. Uh, what do you pay your dues for, then? For the gall darnest collection of services that you ever heard of in your life. To support the work that keeps medical standards what they are. And for legal and medical advice. For the journal and a lot of other scientific activities. For keeping in touch with Congress and help in getting a practice started, and protection for my patients. And holy smokes, I can't even think of all of them. But I do know this, that for every dollar I pay in, I get at least five dollars worth of benefits. Uh -huh. Now, pretty good investment. You're darn right. Oh, to get it all's a goner. Oh, cap the convert. We win. OK, well, lay it on, lay it on. Now, you won fair and square, I know that. Doctor, your office is on the phone. Yeah, I might have known that, too. Here, I'll pay the check. No, 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 let me. Uh, Caps come back into the fold, and it was your needling that started it. But he found his own way, had sense enough to know a good thing when he really looked at it. So let me pay. Well, thanks, well, Ed. Thanks, Ed. Yeah. Looks like all of you doctors oh, won today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the fold, Cap. Yeah. <laughs> good to have you. I don't know what we're going to use for. Well, that could have been the end of it, but it wasn't. Not quite. There was still a story in it, even though it was a little while in coming through. Landed on my desk just a few minutes ago, a news report of the last meeting of the County Medical Society. Dr. K.L. Lambert was elected president of the Douglas County Medical Society. <laughs> well, I guess it's like Cap said, to get the most out of something, whether it's a camera, or the AMA, you've got to work with it.